Welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos. Today, what we're going to do is take a look at the linear raw um, camera profile as well as the standard uh, camera profile. Now, a little while ago, I asked the question, do you prefer to shoot in raw or JPEG? And the reason for that is really just to see if there's any value in uh, showing you the linear raw profile versus the raw profile now or the other camera profiles i should say now this is going to be a very very subjective topic because i think it just depends on the image and your editing style but i'm going to show it nonetheless and kind of talk you through uh what i believe is going on and from what i've read uh, across the internet but moral of the story if you are shooting in a raw format you have the ability to choose the camera profile and there's a bunch of profiles that you can choose and if you have a camera that you uh, specifically or your manufacturer has been recognized by uh, on one then you'll see it down here below linear raw uh, but I'm using the EOS R6, or at least for the demonstration today. So I don't have the camera profiles that are built in, uh, supported inside of on one right now. There is the option. If you look through the user guide, you'll be able to, um, import ICC profiles, but that takes some extra equipment and nobody has time for that. So. What I want to do is really just show you the difference between these on one camera profiles and then this linear raw profile, which there are some very, very key differences. All right. So to do that, I have a few snapshots here. Uh, we're going to take a look at the original photo first. Now, the original photo with none of the edits. Take a look at the histogram. The histogram I'm clearly clipping and mind you, the biggest advantage to using any camera profile is really the initial tone structure that you give your image before you take it into the effects. Now, depending on what you're doing with the image, and this is where that subjectivity comes in, depending on what you're doing with the image, you may not need to push the tonal range too far, but if all you're going to do is enhance colors and uh, you're not going to really impact the tonal range anymore, then you may want to globally address your tonal uh, range inside of your image and then go to the effects module and add in your uh, adjustments for your color and things of that sort. So that's kind of the, the premise, right? You use these camera profiles to help you set the base tone of whatever your image is going to be. Now, this is the original image by default on one standard is what pops up. And then if I go to landscape, you can see it adds in a little bit more contrast. If I go to on one portrait, then it brings out some of those shadow details and brightens up everything essentially. Uh, vivid, it kind of makes this really harsh contrast separation where it's separating as much information uh, from the uh, left and the right. So if you look at the histogram, when I hover over portrait, if you look in the shadow to midtone areas, you can see the information is kind of clustered there. As soon as I hover over vivid, you see it starts to move to the left of the histogram, which means it's darkening a lot of stuff, but still leaving a lot of that information uh, over on the right hand side, which is brightening the image. And that's where the whites and the highlights live. Now, the last one is neutral and you can kind of see what the histogram does there. But more importantly, what's happening is the response to color, right? All of these have a different response to color. This one has a little bit more of a vibrant response. If you go to Vivid, uh, Portrait has a little bit more of a flat response. Landscape has a little bit more of a vibrant response similar to Vivid. And then Standard has um, a vibrant response to color. And then uh, we come down here to Linear Raw. Now. Linear raw is essentially a very flat profile 
it is like uh, if you're in the video, like camera log footage, right? It requires color grading. Now, this is really, really beneficial if you're looking to have as much control over your colors as you possibly can. You want to be in linear raw. The problem is getting that base tone. And this is where, you know, you have to play around with the tonal values and really just uh, working the edit. Linear raw, it will require the most effort to get to a desirable end state. That's my opinion. But, uh, you know, again, this is a subjective uh, topic because... Everyone edits a little bit different, but just so you kind of understand where I'm coming from, linear raw will require a little bit more effort uh, to get that going. Let me give you a demonstration. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my snapshot here with the standard uh, edits. And if you look at my settings, I dropped my exposure by negative uh, 85 or 0.85. Um, contrast is at 9, highlights are at 12, midtones are at 4, shadows at 23, whites at 5, and then the blacks at negative 27. Now, I didn't go beyond this uh, in either one of these, specifically to show you that getting the tone is what's going to really require some effort from you. It can be done, but it is going to require some effort. So now I'm going to click on linear raw edits or linear raw edit. And as you notice, I have a little bit more range in what I can do to edit my image. Negative uh, or minus 1.6 on the exposure as opposed to minus 85. And then contrast, I think this was at nine. Look, I'm boosting it to 30. I have more room is essentially what I'm getting at. If you look at all of these, the values are pushed a little bit more extreme compared to the um, the other, the, the standard profile. The reason for that is what it does to the histogram. Uh, no, wrong thing. What it does to the histogram, how it spreads everything and kind of, or I'm sorry, how it consolidates everything. And then you have to be the one that spreads it out. Uh, so if we were to go back to our original, this is with the on one standard. You see how everything is kind of, uh, it's not flat here. It's very, uh, there's lots of saturation here in the uh the shadows and or a lot a lot of color information i should say um yeah that I, I hope that portion is sinking in you know at least that at a bare minimum if you walk away from this video and you acknowledge that the profiles change the histogram and where the information lays in the photo now you can't do this with a TIFF or a JPEG. You can only do this with a DNG or your manufacturer's raw version of a photo. Um, so just keep that in mind. Now, which one is better? Well, it depends again, and this is where that subjectivity comes in. It depends on what it is you're trying to accomplish with your final photo. If you're going for something where you need way more control to uh, get, you know, the tonal base. Now, mind you, in my examples here, what I was doing is moving the sliders until just before things start to clip. So let me make sure. Yeah, I still got my clipping indicators on. So if I pull this black down, you're going to start to see black. Oh, I guess I got a little bit more room with the black. Uh, you'll start to see black pop up in there, right? Now, for this one, uh, there was a lot of information in those highlights because I overexposed in the highlight department uh, or the whites. So if I were to start pushing this up, you can start to see the whites instantly come back. Now, this is where linear raw presets or camera profiles, I should say, uh, start to work for you right if you overexpose an image now this is not going to save a terribly overexposed image 
But if you tend to expose to the right and you need to bring back some of that uh, information, the better way of doing it is to start with a linear raw profile. And I shouldn't say better. A way of doing it is to start with a linear raw profile and allowing that to be your base and then starting to adjust your tones based off of that. Uh, it, it's going to help you, but it is going to require you to add in some of that color and, and really control it. Now, if you're photographing in black and white or you're going to make a black and white image out of whatever the image is that you're working on, then you may be in luck with the linear raw uh, profile. Um, I'm experimenting with it personally to see if the black and whites work uh, better or worse. So hopefully, again, this video was helpful. Now, if it was, please smash the like button. Uh, let me know in the comment section below what you think about linear raw profiles. Uh, but also let me know if what I said even made sense. I want to make sure that I'm helping provide value to you guys out there in the community. And if I'm not, then, you know, just let me know. It's OK. You're not going to hurt my feelings. I promise. Um, now, if you are new here, my name is Chris. Welcome. I do video tutorials on how to use software like on one photo raw. That's something you're interested in. Then go ahead and smash that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop new content on the channel, which is a fairly consistent basis. And until the next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.